three, this is debate on clauses 17 to 35. The question is at part three, stand part. The Honourable Christopher Finlinson. Mr Chairman, part three deals with services for members of parliament. Refer members to clause 17, which se sets out the principles. There are to be three decision makers in relation to uh, the provision of services for MPs. They are the remuneration authority, the speaker, uh, and in certain circumstances the minister responsible for ministerial services. And in relation to all the services that the respective decision makers uh, provide, they are to have regard to certain principles, and it's worth noting those principles, including the need to, uh, to be fair to the taxpayer, the need for the promotion of transparency, for confidence, or, uh, or maintenance of confidence, I should say, in the integrity of Parliament uh, and in the independence of the remuneration authority. So there are three types of services. Clause 18 uh, sets out the services to be provided by the remuneration authority and the way in which the authority is to make its determination. Clause uh, 24 uh, provides that the Speaker is to be given responsibility for setting directions on travel and uh, communication services for MPs and party and member support funding and the way in which the Speaker is to go about making that determination. Uh, and then Clause 27A deals with the provision of uh, services or entitlements for ministers. Uh, and the minister responsible for ministerial services uh, is to make that determination uh, and the following clauses set out how uh, the uh, minister responsible is to go about that task. I ought, the only other clause I'd refer members to is clause 30, which provides for quarterly reports on travel and accommodation expenses to be prepared by the general manager of the parliamentary service uh, and to be made available in respect of each member of parliament and each party. Call Chris Hopkins. Thank you very much, Mr Chair, and I will again make my contribution on